Miami Marlins are in first place on July 26th. Who would have thought coming to this year that that would be the case? But here we are. The 2-1 and one Marlins have a stranglehold on first place in the National League East. What an unusual time we are living in. What's going on, guys? It's Ethan Badowski here with a reaction to the Marlins and Phillies opening series. Getting started the 2020 season. It was a good series for the Fish. They take two of three from the Phillies. And they get it done in resounding fashion on Sunday to take the series from the Phillies in Philadelphia. It's their only trip to Philadelphia this year. And it was a good one for the Fish. Let's start on Saturday. The... Uh, loss, the one loss in this series. It wasn't the best day for the Fish, certainly. The be- the offense was only able to muster up one run, uh, so the bats were held quiet by a good Zach Wheeler performance. He looked really tremendous, and he kept the Marlins off balance all day. The Marlins couldn't figure him out, and they weren't really able to get any life into the team. They only scored one run on the day, and it was the worst offensive performance of the series, the worst offensive performance of the season so far. Uh, only through three games, but nonetheless, it was a tough day at the plate for the Marlins, and it was a bit of a tough day on the hill for, it was a, actually a tough day on the hill for, sur- for sure for Caleb Smith. He only went three innings. He let up six walks, had about 60 pitches through three innings. He only let up one run, which was the good part of the performance, but nonetheless, he worked himself into way too much trouble, wasn't able to locate in the strike zone with the fastball, that meant he couldn't keep hitters off balance with the curveball and get guys out, and he just wasn't able to do it. And uh, it was a tough day for Caleb, certainly, and we hope there won't be tough days like that for him in the future because he is an important part of the Marlins rotation. No matter how much I, uh, I, I brag on Caleb, he is a big part of the Marlins rotation as their number two starter, and the Marlins need him to be good going forward if they're going to have success this year, certainly. And he wasn't able to find it on Saturday. He just, like I said, couldn't locate with the fastball. And that wasn't able to set up the curveball to get guys out. And when he's not locating the fastball, he's not getting swings and misses on the curveball. And that's a huge problem for him. That is his whole MO. So a tough day on Saturday for the Marlins. And it got a little tougher on Sunday morning when we found out that four uh, players tested positive. And those players are Garrett Cooper, Harold Ramirez, Jose Urania, who was scheduled to start on Sunday, and Jorge Alfaro was confirmed to test positive after the news we heard about him earlier in the week. So Urania was scratched from his start today and after testing positive for COVID-19, and that meant that Robert Duggar took the hill, and Duggar had a tough day on the mound. It wasn't his cleanest start, certainly. He made it through four innings, but he let up uh, six hits and five runs, I think was the final line score. He let up four runs in the first inning. That's not something you can take from your starter. And when he gave up four runs, it looked like the Marlins were in some serious trouble. It looked like the, you know, the, the, the mental aspect of all of this was just weighing on the Marlins too much. You know, four guys test positive, and you find out 30 minutes before the game, and, and it just seemed like it was just too much mentally for the Marlins to handle. But clearly it wasn't because the Marlins battled back. They got four runs in the top of the second inning. They answered right back right after the Phillies got four. The Marlins got four thanks to a home run from Jesus Aguilar. Brian Anderson got on base. Isan Diaz had a nice base hit. And then Miggy Rowe with a three-run shot. And what a day it was for Miggy Rowe. He nearly hit for the first cycle in Marlins history. It's hard to believe that the Marlins have never had a cycle. Miggy Rowe almost got it done today. He came up a double shy. But nonetheless, it was a great day for him. He got the offense jump-started. He was the life in the offense all day today. Brian Anderson added a home run. Corey Dickerson added a home run. So that's four for the Marlins on the day. That's not something we saw a lot of last year. And if you watch my MLB The Show streams where I was calling Marlins games, I talked the entire time pretty much about how the Marlins had to find some power. They had to inject some life into this offense. And by by signing established major leaguers such as Dickerson, such as Aguilar, such as VR, that's the life they were looking for. And Aguilar and Dickerson provided it today. They went deep. And Dickerson... You know, we talked about on fri- on uh, Friday on opening day. He was the spark plug for the Marlins, and he certainly added that to that today. Brian Anderson um, had a nice game. He had two base hits. Isan Diaz hit the ball um, hard three times. That's much better from Isan. That's the kind of stuff that we're looking for, certainly from him. You know, it, it was a rough opening day for him, but he was able to get back on track today and find his stuff. 
And I think, you know, we talked about his approach is so advanced, the way he's able to take, you know, take pitches, find his pitch. It will come with his son. Um, I'm not worried. I'm not panicking. He showed the kind of player that he can be today. So he drove the ball hard three times, and that's what we're looking for. The Marlins are staying in Philadelphia um, because of the coronavirus situation. Um, and we'll talk about that more at the end of the video. But it's certainly a concern right now. And because of that, a guy like Magnor Sierra got a chance um, because of Harold Ramirez's positive test. He started out in center field today, and he had a double or a triple, excuse me, and a base hit. He looked really good. Um, so overall, it was a really great day for the Marlins. And um, even though they're going to be staying overnight in Philadelphia, you know, it's such a crazy situation. It's such a, you know, it has to be weighing on the Marlins mentally. And like I said, we thought that it was doing that and affecting them on the field with their performance in the first inning today. But what an impressive emotional comeback for the Marlins. It wasn't just the way they came back on the field. It was the way that they answered mentally that was so impressive. And it may just look like another win. You know, it's the third game of the season. Who knows how the season is going to pan out? They're only 2-1. and one. But this feels like a really, really big win for the Marlins. You cannot overstate enough how much mentality this takes to come out and play after what happened this morning and then to go down immediately for nothing and then to answer and win 11 to 6 it was really a resounding win for the Marlins so let's talk about some of the highlights of the weekend some of the things that you know I talk about all the time some things we love to see the first was Nick Nider he pitched on um, Saturday and he looked really good he he wasn't the cleanest with his command you know, his command is supposed to be his strong suit, and he was a little off. He was missing inside, missing outside to guys, but he kept it clean. He kept the this Phillies off the score sheet. Um, it was um, two and a third innings of work for him, only one hit and one walk, and no runs allowed. He got he let up some traffic. He had some runners on base, but he was able to work out of it, and that was really, really important from Nick Neidert to see that he can stay composed in tough situations in his MLB debut. You know, we saw that maybe we saw the jitters because I, I would chalk up his lack of command um, on Saturday to the jitters because his command is his strong suit. So the command will be there down the line. Um, and, you know, I kind of chalked that up to jitters. And it was good to see him have those jitters, get them out, settle in and work two and a third clean innings. And I thought Donnie should have left him in and let him try and finish out that third inning. And it would have been really good for his confidence to let, you know, to get three innings of work because right after that, Alex Vestia came in and he let up a home run. That was certainly something we don't love to see from a guy that we were all really excited about. I'm sure we'll see better from Vestia in the future. What else do we love to see? We love to see Corey Dickerson igniting the offense. He had, you know, a two-hit game on Friday. He hit the big home run today. Jesus Aguilar hit two home runs this weekend. Brian Anderson hit a home run this weekend. And then certainly we love to see the performance from Isan Diaz. We saw Jordan Holloway on Sunday, and he struggled. He walked the bases loaded and was only able to get out, you know, one out, worked only one-third of an inning. But the Marlins bullpen had his back, and the Marlins bullpen had guys back all game, actually. And this is another thing that we love to see, which is the Marlins worked into three bases loaded jams and did not allow a run from any of them. And so the bullpen, which we all think is the weak point of this team, came up big on Sunday. They kept the Phillies from getting back into the game, and the Marlins got a big win, a big resounding 11-6 win over the Phillies. They take two of three from the Phillies in Philadelphia, and now we wait and see. And we wait and see if Nick Neidert will slot into the starting spot. You know, it's possible that he takes Urania's spot. I think he probably should take Urania's spot. Um, we saw, you know, we saw the struggles from Duggar today, and... Um, I think that if Neidert hadn't pitched yesterday, he would have been the guy thrown into the fire on short notice to pitch today. So, you know, I would love to see Neidert get that spot. And it's very possible that we could see a Monte Harrison, a Jesus Sanchez, you know, somebody else called up from from Jupiter to replace these guys um, that um, have unfortunately tested positive and will be out for about two weeks with the quarantine procedures, they're going to be left in Philly. So the Marlins are taking off tomorrow morning, waiting, awaiting the test results. 
and and those guys will stay behind in Philly. They're going to be back in Miami five hours before first pitch. It's um, it's crazy. This whole situation is crazy. This whole situation is unavoidable, or it was avoidable, um, and it's just kind of unnecessary. And it's um, it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be like this for the Marlins. The Marlins shouldn't have to go through this, um, but they do, and they keep chugging forward. And because of that, we're going to keep chugging forward. We expect the Marlins to go, um, you know, home and play the Orioles tomorrow night. Um, it'll be Pablo Lopez on the hill for the Marlins. And then on Tuesday, it'll be Eliezer Hernandez before it goes back to the top of the rotation and we get to see Sandy again. So the Marlins go home tomorrow <laughs> for three against the Orioles. And we'll have to see if we can even make it. Nonetheless, it was a really, really good opening series for the Marlins. They take two of three from a division rival, a division foe that a lot of people thought would be better than the Marlins. And these bottom feeders showed that they're here uh, to play and they're here to win. And it was very exciting to see the Marlins perform well. So if you like this kind of content, make sure to just subscribe to Fish Stripes YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing this stuff on a pretty regular basis. Um, I'll react to the Orioles series after that series is complete. And then, you know, big wins, big losses, whatever the case may be, I'll be here to talk to you guys. If you want to interact with me on a daily basis, if you want content like this on a daily basis, follow me on Twitter at EB underscore Gators, and we can chat about the Marlins whenever you like. I'll be there all the time. It's the only thing I've got going on right now to chat about the Marlins. So the Marlins take two of three from the Phillies. They go home to take on the Orioles tomorrow night.